Okay, in this video I'm just going to look at some problems involving uh, parallel and perpendicular lines. So firstly we want to find the equation of a line which is parallel to 3x plus 7y equals 13 and passes through the point 4, 2. Now, hopefully you know what parallel lines are, they're just lines that are, have the same gradient, they're going in the same, exactly the same direction essentially. Uh, so, when you've got an equation in this form, 3x plus 7y equals 13, uh, what you've got to think about is which of the values determine the gradient and which determine the y-intercept or, or you know just how far the page it is however you want to think about uh, what that means. Now it's not in the form y equals mx plus c here, it's fine, we don't need it to be in the form y equals mx plus c, um, but hopefully you, know, you can see that it's the 3 and the 7 that are going to determine the gradient because they're with x and y, uh, they're determining how you know how uh, how steep this line is and uh, the 13 is the thing that's going to change just as we as we alter this uh, this line and move it up and down the page. Um, if you're uh, stuck with y equals mx plus c and want to see it in that way, well, we could have we could rearrange this line and say it's okay. It's seven y is minus three x plus 13, and y equals minus three sevenths x plus 13 over seven. Now. You can see the 3 and the 7 here, uh, minus 3 sevenths x, that's become uh, the gradient, minus 3 sevenths, so there we go, 3 and the 7 have determined the gradient, and the 13 and the 7 have determined the y-intercept here, how far it is at the page. So, actually, I could just change the value 13, uh, and I could get any y-intercept I want, even though it's all divided by 7 as well, I can just change this to any value I want. Uh, to, to get a different y-intercept. Okay, so um, now if we already had the equation in this form, of course to solve this I could say, okay, well uh, it's got the same gradient, so the line that I'm looking for is going to be y equals minus 3 sevenths x plus c, and I could now say, okay, I know it goes through the point 4, 2, so that's x equals 4, y equals 2, so I plug in y equals 2 and get y equals minus 3 sevenths times 4 plus c and then rearranging this, well c is going to be 2 plus uh, 12 sevenths which is 26 over 7. Okay, so the, the answer I'm looking for is y equals minus 3 sevenths x plus 26 over 7. But um, I'd argue that's a bit of a long-winded way of, of doing this uh, because given that we've noticed that just the 3 and the 7 here determine the gradient, why not just uh, at this stage say, okay, well, another other lines with gradient 3 sevenths are of the form of minus 3 sevenths, are of the form 3x plus 7y equals a constant. Okay, now, uh, so I could say, I'm just going to change this 13 to another value, let's call it d, so we don't get confused with c, although quite often I would just call this c as well, although it wouldn't be the y-intercept then. Uh, and I know it passes through x equals 4, y equals 2, so when x equals 4, 3 times 4 plus 7 times 2, that's y equals 2, that's d, so we've got 12 plus 14, so that's d equals 26. So I found out then that this line is 3x plus 7y equals 26, and I would argue that's much simpler than going through having to go through y equals mx plus c every time. Um, this is exactly the same as this line because this one will rearrange to 7y equals minus 3x plus 26 and then dividing by 7 we get minus 3 sevenths x plus 26 over 7. So these two lines are exactly equivalent but there was no need to do all of this. This is a perfectly good equation of a straight line. So um, one of the things you need to realize, especially when you're going from GCSE to A level, you know, maybe at GCSE, I GCSE straight lines were always y equals mx plus c, but there's no reason for that to be the case, and, and much more efficient a lot of the time to use different forms of the straight line to solve problems. Okay, here's another question. Find the equation of the line perpendicular to y equals 4x plus 3, which passes through the point 3c. So here we are in the form y equals mx plus c, so we've got gradient 4 and y-intercept y -intercept 3. Now a perpendicular line that's a line that's at right angles to the original line. So if this was y equals 4x plus 3, uh, so we'd have, say, uh, so this, is, this, this one here has m equals 4 for the gradient, 
For this one, the perpendicular one, we need to take the negative reciprocal. Okay, so there's two parts of this, negative and reciprocal. So I need to make this negative, so take it so that means make it minus four, and take the reciprocal, which means do one divided by it. So this would be m equals minus one quarter. So it's almost like I'm taking this thing uh, for thinking of it as a fraction, four over one, turning it upside down and making it negative. Okay, so if my original gradient had been three sevenths, the negative reciprocal would be minus seven thirds. If it had been uh, one fifth, it would have been minus five over one, which is just minus five. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We're taking the negative reciprocal if we want the gradient of the perpendicular uh, line. Okay, so this is an, a, a, a line then with gradient minus one quarter. So it's minus one quarter x plus a constant. And we know it goes through the point three, six. So when x equals three, y equals six. So I've got six equals minus three quarters plus c, because that's minus a quarter times three. So add three quarters to both sides and I get six. Uh, c is six and three quarters, which I would write here as 27 over four. So the line that we're looking for is y equals minus one quarter x plus 27 over four and uh, this probably neater to write this line uh, multiplying it all by 4 as 4y equals minus x plus 27 or even uh, x plus 4y equals 27 all different forms of the same of the same line okay okay so just summarize what we've done there for things that are in the form y equals mx plus c y equals 3x plus 5 and I want to I want a, a line that goes through 7 3 if it's parallel, I just keep just keep the gradient the same, so it's still y equals 3x, and now plus some constant. Uh, and I know when x is 7, y equals 3, so this gives me 3 equals 3 times 7 plus c, so c is minus 18, so I get y equals 3x minus 18. And if it's perpendicular, a perpendicular line we're looking for, a one that's perpendicular to this and goes through this point, then uh, I would just take that gradient 3, take the negative reciprocal to make it minus one third, x plus a constant, and now when x equals 7, y equals 3, so I get 3 equals minus 7 thirds plus c, so c is 3 plus 7 thirds, so that's 5 and a third, or 16 over 3, so the line would be y equals minus one third x plus 16 over 3, okay? so fairly straightforward uh, once you get the hang of it. Of course, don't forget, like that first example, we don't always need to go through the form y equals mx plus c. It can be simpler to just notice which terms uh, involve the gradient and which uh, affect the y-intercept uh, without having to go through this long-winded, uh, you know, without having to go through a more long-winded method of finding this. But of course, if it's in the form y equals mx plus c already, we would just do it like this.